if if I were an outsider and see all of this, I would I would think people are crazy. I really think that NFT is a whole new type of tool. A new medium where you can express yourself and like coders can express themselves. It's like a new paintbrush. And there are people who will see it in a native way of like, hey, NFTs have these interesting properties and I could paint a whole new picture that was impossible before. An NFT stands for a non-fungible token. NFTs are, represent digital ownership, right? This is something, this is a brand new concept that most people have never actually ever experienced before. A non-fungible token is just proof of ownership and authenticity. At its core, it's ownership on the internet. Um, but sometimes people don't really understand that, like why do I need to own something on the internet when I can just have the image or the picture? So like I try to explain it as like, you know, a digital asset that's like permanently written on the blockchain. But that can be, that in and of itself could have some lingo that people don't really understand. What is a blockchain? It's just a new kind of computer. It's this Im previously impossible idea of a computer that no one actually controls. And yes, there are individual computers that are running that network. But if those people shut down their computers, the network will run on other people's computers because of the replication. If you create your art and you NFT it, we know who owns it, you own it. And we can see all the transactions that are happening as well too. People can steal your images, your posts, anything that you put on on the internet, right? Um, but in Web3, it leaves a nice little like trail of like transactions on the blockchain and it's per permanent and it's immutable. Like people cannot modify it. So the way you can think about it is that if I have a dollar bill and you have a dollar bill, those dollar bills are fungible, right? It doesn't matter which dollar bill I have. But now if I take one of the dollar bills and I sign my name on the dollar bill, that dollar bill now is marked, right? This dollar bill is now unique. So that's what non-fungible means. What you're able to do with non-fungible tokens online is you're able to digitize assets and prove ownership of you know, any sort of digital piece or digital information. It's a digital way to verify that information. It's easy just for us to make sure that, you know, like, scarcity and all the value of a very specific item is present and it's like public for everybody to see. This whole space is about flipping the pyramid from large corporations, tech companies who control your data and control all that type of information to the little guys who are the creators and, and typically are the bottom of the pyramid and they're struggling for them to get a following on Instagram or, or make a living doing what they love doing. Right now, the whole rage is PFPs or profile picture projects. And PFPs are essentially avatars that you would have in, in, in your social media profile. And they typically release about 10,000 of them as a collection or a set. What really got me excited about NFTs and Web3 in general was uh, some of the work we were doing at Shape. We were really looking at how do we uh, turn some of these JPEGs into 3D elements and really build off of some of the technology that we were building in more of the VR, AR space with brands. When you look inside the NFT contract, it actually has the instructions for how to create that NFT. For example, orange shirt, sunglasses, fedora hat, that could be currently a 2D gutter cat. But if you have the right type of game engine, the right type of environment, that engine can actually look at those instructions and goes, okay, I get it, orange shirt, sunglasses, fedora hat, turn it into a 3D avatar. And sort of the sense that these tokens are actually the instruction manual for the next chapter of the internet. It's funny, because I, I think that the hype is deserved, but it's a little, premature. And the best analogy I can think of is the, you know, the, the dot-com boom and bust, where in 1998, you know, virtually every company was adding dot-com to their name because it would boost their stock price. There's a lot of people seeing this space and they're like, hey, it's all about the money and all that. I don't think that's the right way to go down. Uh, the right way to go down is thinking about the networks. How do we change the relationships between people? How do we enable more people who are underserved? And if you come from that standpoint, then NFTs and DAOs are, are actually tools for you to, to, to make that change. I think NFTs will become this ubiquitous thing that everybody has, everybody owns digital assets. As the creator economy kind of goes on online, these are 
the places where these items will be consumed, right? And so it creates its own sort of like digital economy in itself. The NFT is not only like for digital artists. And I think we were going to see like a window cleaning service that's going to come and like you're going to subscribe to their NFTs and you're going to buy their NFTs. And once you hold this NFT, people are going to come clean your windows. You know, apes only appeal to so many people. Sports only appeal to so many people. And I think that um, as time goes on, everyone's going to have a way that they can interact with this technology that is meaningful to them.